Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. And uh, again, back to our Java quiz series. So this is a question that I asked yesterday that what will be the output of this program? I have given uh, two integer numbers, T1 and T2, 100 and 100, two variables I have defined with the wrapper class integer and integer here. And I'm comparing these two T1 and T2 with the double equal to operator and the output I have already written, which is true. And then I asked the question about P1 and P2, which is equal to 200, then what will be the output of P1 and P2 in that case? And uh, see this around 1266 people, they have voted and then 73% people, they have given the wrong answer here. So if you see the result here, that the right answer is true and false. I'm not sure that, okay, why people they have selected false and false because I've already returned true here because T1 and T2 is already, I have given the answer here. I was asking majorly for the P1 and P2 actually. So 73% people are, again, majority of the people, they have given the wrong answer for that. So right answer is true and false. So the concept here that we are applying, the concept of integer caching. Remember this thing, there is one a pool or you can say caching pool, just like we have a, in Java, we have a string constant pool, not exactly a string constant pool, but again, this is for the memory optimization. In integer uh, caching pool, there is one range which is already predefined, 8 to positive 127. This is a range which is already predefined in this particular caching pool in the Java memory. So what happens when uh, JVM getting loaded, right? So once the JVM loads, and in the memory, this pool is actually created. And in this particular pool, this, let's see, this is a pool and this is my Java memory. In this particular Java memory, this range, which is already predefined like minus 128 to uh, positive 127. So within this range, if you write any number with integer wrapper class, see, I'm not writing any primitive data type here. I'm writing capital I here and which is a wrapper class. So what exactly it will do? It will hold the value. It will do the auto boxing internally by calling the integer dot value of method. And this hundred will be given to T1 and this hundred will be given to T2 here. Or you can say these are two integer literals that I have created. And we know that, okay, whenever uh, with the uh, literals that I have created these two uh, classes references, you can say that, and when I compare the references, it will generally, it gives me the false here, but why it is giving me the true. This is the concept of the caching here. So whenever you declare, let's see T100 and T200. So let's see, this hundred is also available inside the cache because it's coming within this range only. So T1 is also pointing to hundred and T2 is also pointing to the hundred here. So in that case, when you compare within the range of the cache, it will always give you true here with this range is already predefined in Java, right? T1 equal to equal to T2 will give you true here, but the moment you go out of the range. So first let's run this program and let's see what is the output of this program. I'm running it. And then output of this program, you can see T1 equal to T2 are true. Perfect. But let's see, I'll go beyond the range. This is the question that I asked that, if I'm writing P1 equal to 200, P2 is equal to 200, <clears throat> but this 200, 200 is not available within the range of cash. And remember this, don't get confused with the byte range. This is nothing related to the byte range. This is, you can say, this is just related to the small numbers because most of the time in your framework or in your application for the better memory optimization, Java has given that, okay, we are storing some small numbers like minus 128 to positive 127 in the pool, in the cache. And then if you are creating any value within these cache, we will always give you, and you compare, we will always give you true here. But the moment you go beyond 127, for example, 200 and 200, in that case, the output will be false when I compare P1 and P2 here. So you see the output is giving me false here, right? So that is the concept. So don't get confused with the byte range. It's a spatial range is defined. That range is called integer caching. When JVM loads in the memory and this range also will be loaded inside the memory. So that's what P1 equal to equal to P2 will give you a false here. So this is only and only for the small numbers within this particular range. Now, for example, if I'm writing, let's see positive 127, and this is also positive 127 if I compare it, 
it's within the range. This is the last value. Yes, I can do it. So now it will start giving me true here. So that's what if you run it, it's giving me true here. The but moment I go beyond 127, let's see 128 and 128, I'm comparing it. Then it will start giving me a false here. Okay. So this is the concept. Now, this concept is not applicable for the integer object that you are creating. So what exactly we have done here, we have created the literals. We are not creating any, using any new keyword here, or we are not creating a heap memory object here. So here we are actually creating a new brand object with the help of new keyword. And then again, I'm giving uh, 100 and 100 here, which is given within the range of integer caching. First of all, remember that in Java 9, in JDK 9 onwards, the constructor of the integer int is actually deprecated. Okay, so I should not write the code like this, but let's see if I still giving the value 100 and 100 here, then what will be the output? It will be true or false. It means integer caching is applicable with the, with the new keyword also, or when you create a fresh object with the new keyword like this, no, it is not applicable. So when you compare I1 equal to equal to I2, it will start giving you false here. Now, this is a regular concept that you should not compare uh, two object references with the double equal to operator. So it will start giving you false here. So when you run this, you can see a false here. So integer caching concept is only applicable. I'll write it only and only for integer literals. Okay. Remember within this particular range only without any new keyword. So what is the right way? See the best way of comparison always go with the dot equals method. Now I'll tell you one small thing here that this range is fixed for all the JVMs. See for most of the JVM, this range is already fixed, but it depends because JVM is always platform dependent. Java is platform independent, but JVM is always depend on your operating system on your machine, actually, whatever machine dependent, actually. So it could be possible that this JVM range can be different. So to, let's say you have written this particular code and you are comparing T1 equal to T2, which is giving you true here. Or well, let's say this is also giving you true here. But what if tomorrow you are using and you're deploying your application on some other machine where the range is different because of the JVM install on that machine? It could be different, maybe on some Unix machine or Linux machine. Then in that case, you might get some different results. Although most of the machines are having the same integer caching range. But to avoid these kind of confusions, always compare the integers with the help of dot equals method. So see here, I'm writing T1 dot equals to T2, which is actually comparing the value, not the references here. So again, I'm writing this P1 dot equals to P2. Both will start giving me true and true here. So dot equals method, safer side, we always use instead of double equal to with these kind of comparisons. So you can say true and true. This is the right comparison instead of writing double equal to. If you really want to use double equal to, you can use it. But within this particular range, only you can use it. The moment you go beyond the range like 200 and 200, it will start giving you false here. This is the concept. Okay, that's why this question was asked and uh, really disappointing to see the result. Most of the quiz people are giving the wrong answer. Please improve your basics. Please improve these kind of concepts, guys, are very important for interview point of view. And if you're learning a specific language also, you should know about what do you mean by memory? What do you mean by caching? What do you mean by pool, the ranges or data types and everything? On the basis of that, people might ask you the questions at a time of interview. I hope this is clear. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much. I have already given. So that's all for this video. I have already uh, prepared around 10 to 12 videos on my channel about this quiz series. You can follow me on LinkedIn also. I generally ask this question on LinkedIn. You can just search Naveen Kurida on LinkedIn and you will see my quizzes over there. You can follow me and you can connect me on LinkedIn also there. Thank you so much.